All right, ladies, I am specifically speaking to you. If you feel like your role has been in the background, that you need to raise your hand to participate, that these ideas that you have are maybe not as valued as some of the males in your life, family, or people that you work with, this next author is going to blow your mind. Her name is Iris Angelus, and she wrote the book, Passion to Thrive, Reclaim Your Life's Potential, Purpose, Passion, and Power. I love that, the four Ps. So empowering. Iris, thank you for being here. We're glad that you're here. It's such a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Now, the title doesn't specifically say women, Mm. but it is focused towards women. It is definitely focused for women, yes. Uh, Open-minded men might find it useful as well, but it's primarily aimed at women, yes. And, And what is the general message of your book? The general message of the book is that women have a whole bunch of skills, talents, gifts, ways of being in the world, resources that um, they probably don't even know they have. But if they can tap into these resources, they will start living a magical life, a meaningful life, a life that's in alignment with who they truly are. So I don't want to blame men for this. So I'm going to try to take a really positive spin. I will say that maybe we've just put ourselves in a box for um, for lots of different reasons. Maybe it's just um, the school that we went to, the path that we took. Maybe mm-hmm. it is we feel like people who have been empowered around us and didn't empower us. Um, but this is really an important point is that you're saying, stop, think about where you're at, and you can change the trajectory right now. Don't get me wrong. Men are in a box as much okay. as women are. Um, but because I am a woman and I've had my own journey, I feel like I can speak to women specifically because they don't need to reinvent the wheel. They can just kind of follow the ideas and suggestions or templates, whatever you want to call them that I present in my book. Before we get into some of those templates, what, what motivated you to write this? What epiphany did you have in your life to go, uh, we, I got to write this down. I've got to share this with other women. Um, Well, I've always felt really strongly that we need to take care of our earth and that we can't treat her like a resource. Um, Mm -hmm. And I feel that the way we treat earth is very similar to the way that we treat people and women in particular. So, you know, we've done things a certain way for quite a number of millennia now and it's not working. Um, So we need to change how we do things. So what that means is that every single human being on the planet needs to claim the divine feminine and the divine masculine sides and kind of integrate the two so that we can have a balance between being and, and doing and resting and striving and, you know, leisure and work, right? So life is about living. It's not about working. It's not about doing all the time. Yeah. So we've got to have this balance. And if we have that balance, everybody can just like take a big breath realize that they're good enough as they are, that they have all the gifts that they need, that they, you know, have have inherent worth. That's a really big one for me. Mm -hmm. Inherent worth. Every being on this planet, and I'm not just talking humans, have inherent worth by virtue of being alive, right? And if we can honor our own inherent worth and all the other beings' inherent worth, all of a sudden there's this relaxation that can happen. And we can just live and understand that every single moment that we breathe is actually magical and and divine. So if I'm hearing you right, it sounds like the world has gotten out of balance. Hasn't it ever? (laughs) Go ahead and and expound more on that. Well, if we live in a world that's basically about to die because we've, um, you know, used up the clean air and the clean water and abused it dying and Mm -hmm. totally abused it, Mm -hmm. just used Mm -hmm. it like a resource Mm -hmm. without a sense of we actually need to we need to acknowledge that we are a part of nature, that we belong to Mother Earth, like our bodies belong to Mother Earth, right? And everything that we are and do and have, everything has been provided by Mother Earth. So we need to understand, right? We can't be like, you know, this ever-expanding colony of people. We actually need to put back, give back to the Earth that nurtures us so we can recreate the balance and the, 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 the gratitude and the appreciation for everything that nature offers us. It seems like a big message in the book is that you have a decision to make. You don't have to keep going down the same road. You can choose how and who and why you're in the world. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the time, you know, there's never a wrong time to choose. You know, like now is probably better than next week, but next week's going to be better than next year. Mm -hmm. And ultimately it comes down to are you truly happy in your own skin? Do you you enjoy your own company? Do you love who you are? Do you like your friends, your, you know, where you live, your community? Do you feel connected and nurtured and held and seen for who you are and if the answer is no then there's room for improvement and my book provides 
ways to find what those changes could be and how you can make those changes. It's I was, literally I, just about, sorry, it's no. literally just about playing, playing with different concepts, trying them out. It's like, do you remember being a kid and you had this like big box with all these magical outfits and you would yeah. be a princess or you would yes. be, I don't know, Robin Hood or right. a superhero. It's like that. You just try these different things on and if it feels like a good fit, you keep playing in it. And if it doesn't, you move on and do something else. You bring up such a great point because as kids, we can dig through that box, but we get ourselves stuck in a box with one costume as adults, you know? Oh, exactly. This, one, the, this is the one that was assigned to me. I must stay in it. And I love the fact that you're encouraging people to say, you're allowed to ask, are you happy with your job, your friends, your religion, your life, your home, you know? And if not, do something. Change exactly. it. Change the conversation. Exactly. Will you be happy wow. at the end of your life looking back going, uh, I just compromised my entire life? Wow. Or will you go, I'm really happy I had the courage to start questioning things and changing things. And don't get me wrong, you don't have to kind of sell your house and move somewhere else. Right, just you know, your tomorrow. family. Right. It's, it's just about small incremental changes. And as you grow into your worth and into your power and to your passion and your purpose more and more, things will naturally fall away that don't really belong with you, that never sat quite right, that were never in alignment with you anyway. Hmm. So you can just relax into it, play with it, and then, you know, life will unfold in a new way. I'm not saying it's easy. I am saying it's simple. <laughs> you know, there may be someone listening that that says, I've, I've always hated the position I've been in as far as work. Um, I want to write. Your book is encouraging you to say, why not? Exactly. Give it a try. And yep. and when you say that you can just do it in, in little increments, those are bite-sized pieces that we can all we can all take a bite size. It doesn't exactly. have to be overwhelming. No, it doesn't. That's very encouraging. No. Um let's talk about the pressure <laughs> that many of us feel, the role of being a mom. Mm. That you're not a real woman if you haven't birthed a child or you, you don't have a child. Uh, you're not the guardian. You're not caring for, um, for a, a, you know, a youngster. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's one of those boxes that women have really tightly be fitted into. Oh, you know, you can't possibly fulfill it if you haven't had a child. Mm. It's like, well, mothering isn't for everyone. Right. You know, sure. mothering can be um, something that you love doing. I have met women who loved mothering so much. They said it was a selfish thing for them to do. Mm -hmm. To me, those are the kind of women that should be mothering because they love mothering, mm -hmm. right? right? I have met many women in my life who said, look, if I knew how tough it was going to be, I wouldn't have done it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and, and there's regret there. And, of course, you know, when they're your children, you love them and you raise them to the best of your ability. But why should we not have the choice? to be a complete woman with without having a child right and we can be the best auntie to mm -hmm. you know our, our our siblings children or to you know children in the neighborhood or we can go and work with children in a different position or if you if you create something else and that could be a charity or it could be a, mm -hmm. a workplace or it could be art or it could be whatever it is like those can be the things that you bring forth that your creativity brings forth Ultimately, it's about expression, right? Like if you express your own true signature frequency, if you do the things that give your heart joy and makes your heart overflow with love and gratitude for this life, then you're doing the thing that you were meant to be doing as far as I'm concerned. Hmm. And that may or may not involve raising a child, right? It takes a village to raise a child. So sure. women who don't have children are actually necessary to give parents a rest, right? <laughs> Absolutely. I'm intrigued by the fact that you talk about the um, the phrase divine feminine. And I think instantly you would go to, oh, that's a mom that can handle everything. But then I turn back to, but what if? What if it is a different meaning than what we've been, what, what culture has led us to believe? Talk to me about your definition of divine feminine. So to me, there, there is, there's two aspects to everything. There's kind of the, the functional way of something and there's the dysfunctional side of something, right? So mm -hmm. the dysfunctional side is generally what we call ego. So let's go with that. So anybody who comes from their ego all of the time is not going to be in the divine feminine or divine masculine, right? If you come from a place of ego, a place of fear, 
that's what kind of shuts you down and keeps you locked in and, you know, makes things unpleasant generally. Hmm. If you can step into your heart and feel, um, so that's kind of the place that we come from when we're in our divine feminine or divine masculine and we can come from our true authentic selves, from our hearts, from a place of, you know, I'm okay and I'm worthy as I am and you are too and I see you, then that's what we, then that's when we come from the divine feminine. To me, the divine feminine is a place of rest and nurture and creativity and, you know, kind of percolating these amazing ideas that we can have and leisure and just being. To me, the divine feminine is all about just being. And then when we step into the masculine, we take what the beingness tells us and instructs us to uh, to do and then we take action based on that divine feminine inspiration if that makes sense yeah so to me the divine masculine is the action and the divine feminine is the being iris we've got to start wrapping up and we could spend hours talking about this i i feel your book is such a breath of relief it's it's like um it, it's approval to ask it's it's approval to say let me see what else what what if you know uh, we just don't stop to make sure we're okay we just keep going like a hamster on a wheel and uh, i mean your message is so on spot i mean, just so important um do you have any final thoughts before we um wrap up here give yourself permission to play mm. and you know like you were saying the what if you know Pretend you're at the at the end of your life and look back and go, if you have more of this, you know, if this is all your life is for the rest of your life, are you going to be happy? Are you going to feel like you led a good life? And if the answer is yes, awesome, more power to you, keep going. That's fantastic and amazing. If the answer is no, just create small incremental changes that are more in alignment with who you are and it will get easier. Um, I usually think, you know, if you always have coffee in the morning, maybe try tea or a glass of water or go for a run or do some yoga or whatever it is, you know, like just do a little something that's different and that will open up the door to call in the changes that you're really yearning for. I love it. And where is your book available? Um, on Amazon and in Barnes and & Noble and Balboa Press. They're the three main ones. Wonderful. Um, and you can get it in ebook and in hard copy. Great. We want to thank Prime 7 Media for making this uh, interview possible. And Iris, have a wonderful day. I hope we talk again. Thank you. Me too. Thank, thank you, you, Suzanne.